Yo, Tens. Yes. I'm making a video. What's your best aiming tip? <laughs> best aiming tip? Yeah, for aiming. Shoot the head. You're a genius. Innovating. What's up, brother? I'm Zopper, the Immortal 3 Yapper, and this is 20 aim tips for Valorant. Number one, tension management. This one, it's pretty crazy. It's a little bit slept on. And honestly, if you're not already working on your tension management, this is definitely something you should look into. I'd say probably the GOAT in the aim training community, Maddie Overwatch, talks about this a lot. And if someone that good at aiming thinks it's like that important, it's definitely something you should look into. The reason why tension management is so important is for a few different reasons. If you think about it, if your arm's completely tensed up and you're trying to like flick on someone, that's when you're gonna have shaky aim. Not only is your aim gonna be shakier, but just think about it. Like, try right now. Flex your arm as hard as you can. There's no way you're gonna be able to have precise movements if your entire arm is like flexing like you're fucking lifting 100 pounds. It's just not gonna happen. And so tension management is really important because similarly, you'll have problems if you're too relaxed. Like, your muscles need to be engaged. It's a highly complex skill and your muscles need to be working in order to be aiming accurately. I recommend if you're more curious about this, definitely go and look at Matty Overwatch's channel. He has a lot of like really good aiming tips and he's a he's a pro. He's just like really good at aiming. So definitely go look at his shit. He's got some great tips for you guys. Number two, when flicking at non-moving targets, it's better to under flick the target than it is to over flick. So, so think of it this way. When you over flick the target, you're flicking to the right. Let's, let's say you're flicking to the right. You flick to the right and then you have to do the opposite motion with your arm. You have to move it back to the left to adjust onto the target. Whereas if you under flick the target, you're flicking close and then you can finish the movement. They're both right adjustments. You flick to the right and then you do a slight right adjustment onto the target. So ergonomically, this is easier for your body to, you know, like manage because you're flicking the same direction for both. I would say you're, you're doing a fast flick into a slow flick and, it's, and it can be one fluid motion if it's going in the same direction, which is why under flicking is actually better. Where when you over flick, it's like, it's not one fluid motion because you have to flick and then you have to like jitter back onto it. And it's possible, but it's not as efficient. And there's another reason why this is super important is because when you're over flicking the target, your brain has to process more information. If you can consistently under flick, then you're basically telling your brain like, okay, I'm gonna flick close and then I can do a slight adjustment onto the target. And it's always gonna be, let's say when I'm flicking to the right, it's always gonna be to the right of the target. Flicking to the left, always gonna be to the left of the target. Where if you over flick sometimes, every time you flick, your brain's gonna be like, okay, where am I at? Which direction do I have to flick? And it can be a range of like 300 to 60 degrees around the target. So there's like way more, let's say like unpredictability of where your crosser's gonna land, which makes your decision-making slower. It, it's gonna be harder for your brain because there's like more possibilities. So yeah, case point, just when you're flicking at non-moving targets, try to under flick it. It's really good in practice. And if you can practice it a lot, it's going to transfer to your games as well. Number three, when flicking at moving targets, you want to under flick if they're moving towards your crosshair and over flick if they're moving away. This one's pretty simple. Um, it's kind of the same as the last point in the fact that you're simplifying the aiming process for yourself. But this is important as well because you're essentially preparing for the direction the enemy's moving. So it helps you with your target reading skills because you have to see which direction they're moving. But it also allows you to like make the aiming process easier for yourself, like I said, because if you place your crosshair in front of the way they're moving, they're going to walk into your crosshair and you can just click and get a free kill. If you do this properly, it can take away the necessity of needing a micro adjustment. And if you don't need a micro adjustment, the aiming process is a lot easier. If you've ever pre-aimed an angle, peeked out, your crosshair's right on their head, you're going to kill them super fast. And I'm sure lots of you guys have done it before. You guys aren't horrible players. I'm sure you guys have experienced this and you know when that happens free kills all day and this is basically you're you're doing this for yourself during a gunfight you throw your crosshair in front of where they're moving they'll walk right into it and then boom free kill number four aim with your movement this is what Wuhujin preaches all the fucking time it's super important uh, i wouldn't say it's the most important thing but it is very important um, if you have really good raw mouse control this isn't as important but your movement is important in general because that's what keeps you alive the longest. And the longer you're alive, the easier aiming becomes because you have more time to aim. Um, so aiming with your movement is important and it's super easy to do. 
you could watch Hujin's video if you want to like, you know, see his steps to doing it. He's got great steps to learning it. But it's similar to like under flicking, over flicking the target. If let's just do it, let's put it this way. If you're moving to the right, you want to flick to the left of the target so that as your movement is slowing down, going to the right, your crosshair is inevitably going to move to the right as well. So by the time you stop moving, your movement has moved your crosshair from the left of the target onto the target. And then when you stop moving, you can just shoot. I say it's similar to the last point because literally, you know, your movement is doing the aiming for you. Uh, you don't have to do the micro correction because the movement does it for you. So it simplifies it. Um, I'm going to be saying that a lot because a lot of aim is really just simplifying the process for yourself to make it easier for your brain, uh, to make it easier mechanically, and it just makes the whole thing easier and more fun when it's simpler, right? Um, a lot of improvement is just simplifying things for yourself and making things more efficient and effective, shit like that. Number five, most of the time you should be focusing on the target with your eyes. I know a lot of people know this now, but why is it so important? Um, for one, if you're looking right at the target, you're getting the most visual information. So if you're staring at the target, like you're really focusing on it, it's going to be more easy to see what direction they're moving. Are they going left? Are they going right? Are they jumping? But also you'll be able to see whether or not your crosshair is on them. If you're looking at the target and you don't see your crosshair on them, well, you're missing your shots and it's pretty obvious. It's pretty easy to see. And so when you're focusing on the target with your eyes, not only does it make target movement reading easier, which is super important in all games, even Valorant, even though there's not as much tracking in Valorant. And you know what's even more important is it makes micro corrections easier because it's easier to tell whether you're on or off the target. Um, not to mention your crosshair always stays in the middle of the screen. So it's easier for your brain to process where your crosshair is at all times, as opposed to the enemy can be moving anywhere on your screen. So it might not always be at the center. Obviously, when you watch pros with eye trackers, sometimes it looks like they're only focusing on their crosshair. It's just not the case. It's just that their raw mouse control has gotten so good that the majority of the time that they're aiming, um, they can keep the crosshair centered on where they're looking, which is, you know, it's honestly very impressive. Number six, when is it good to actually focus on your crosshair instead? Um, this one's pretty simple, but Aimer7 basically says if the target is easy to read, e like easy movement, like they're not moving very much really slow, or if they're really small, you should be focusing on your crosshair. This is because uh, focusing on your crosshair increases precision. So if they're really far away, you're looking at your crosshair, it's more easy to identify if your crosshair is on them or not, right? So that's super important. And then like if it's a super easy target, like, I don't know, you can just focus on your crosshair to like confirm whether you're on target or not. I don't know all the logic behind it. I use personally, I just usually focus on the target with my eyes just to like simplify it, like I said, but it is good to focus on your crosshair sometimes. And if you want to implement that into your gameplay, it can be really strong. Um, I'd say mostly for far away targets, it's good. If they have really easy movement too, you can do this and it works. But if they have easy movement and they're close to me, I still focus on it with my eyes because when you're looking at the target with your eyes, like you have quicker reactions and that's just a fact. Number seven, your setup matters. I know this is a surprising one. A lot of people are like, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. Let me tell you why. So personally for me, when I, when I started aiming, I, you can go a long way, like without having a good setup, I'll be completely honest. I know Shroud said he hit global elite for the first time on CSGO, actually running like 60 FPS, which is honestly really impressive if you think about it. So basically when you're running 60 FPS or like a 60 Hertz monitor versus like 144, your game is gonna be choppier. And you can ask anybody, if you're jumping back from 144 Hertz to 60 Hertz, you're kind of just like, it feels weird to play. Like the game, like it, it's more jumpy. Like you can physically see it. Every little detail matters when you, you're getting to like the highest level because these little things are literal advantages in competitive play. And so your setup matters. Um, if you're not getting enough FPS to run 144 Hertz, it's not worth it. But if you're taking this game like really seriously, you might want to invest in something like that because it will make a difference. I'd say improving your game sense, improving your aim, shit like that is probably more important in the long run. Um, but it definitely helps. And I know, I know for me, the first time I upgraded from 60 Hertz to 144 Hertz, I literally broke every single high score I had in aim training, like every single, literally every single one. I'm not even joking. And it's because it makes aiming easier because your brain is getting like more up to date information on what's going on. And like, it's important. It matters. So yeah, if you don't have a great setup, definitely keep this in mind. It might be holding you back. 
it's not the only problem. You probably have other shit you gotta work on too, but it does affect your gameplay. So it's important to keep in mind, especially for aiming. I, I'd say aim is the thing it affects the most. Um, that being said, I do have affiliate links in the description. Yes, it's kind of an ad, I guess. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm just like a broke kid. I'm literally 23 living out in the world and I, I'm working as a server. I don't make that much money. If you have a good setup, totally just like ignore the shit because like it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep making videos for you guys. I still got tons of free content, but yeah, you know, it's there if you guys want to help me out and you want to help yourselves out too, I guess. Right. I will say the PC I have linked in the description isn't mine. I have a custom built, but it's similar specs to the one I have. But yeah, again, guys, like means the world to me and you guys are like making my dreams come true every day. So I appreciate you guys for that. I don't need any money from you guys, but every little donation helps me personally. And also, you know, it helps my channel grow. So I really appreciate you guys, seriously. Number eight, before a gunfight, you need to forget about everything else. You should be 100% present for every gunfight you take. If you think about it, when you're in deathmatch, when you're aim training, all you have to worry about is aiming. And so your aim is usually better in those scenarios than it is in ranked. I, I hear a lot of people say this. They're like, yeah, I'm like crazy in deathmatch. Like I fucking win every time but I go in ranked and I just always whiff. And it's usually because you're thinking about the game too much. So it's really important to think about strategy. I'd say game sense is more important than aim in the game, but it, when you're taking a gunfight, you can't be thinking about the game. If you're peeking an angle and you're worried about like, oh, your dude's like, you got, you got fucking killjoy peeking right and he's gonna die and lose all of his utility. If you're thinking about that while you're taking a gunfight, your brain's elsewhere and, and your aim's not gonna be as crispy as like it usually is. You need to be like fully focused. You need to be fully present for all the fights you take because it's really going to maximize your chances of winning the fight. Number nine, tracking. It's more important than you think. Primarily, this is for, you know, target reading skills like I mentioned before. But if you don't practice your tracking, you totally freaking should. Okay, it's really important. And the better your tracking is, the easier it's going to be to hit like 80 strafing targets, people who are running across your screen, everything like that. So if you struggle with those things, you got to try out tracking. Come on, let's go. Number 10. The fundamentals of tracking. Okay, so you wanna train tracking now? It's pretty simple. The basic fundamentals of tracking, I'm gonna keep it quick and short. Uh, when tracking, the most simple way to think of it is you don't wanna predict the target at all. You want to assume, I, li I like when people explain it this way. You want to assume the target is gonna keep moving the direction it's moving right now, forever. Obviously, people change directions, but the point is, if the target's moving left, you want to assume it's gonna keep moving left. So you just wanna track it left all the way, like it's gonna keep going forever. And you want to keep it keep your crosser on the target the best you can as if it's going to go left forever and then when it changes directions you want to react to the change and then assume it's going the other direction forever and this is the best way to train your tracking because over time you'll get faster at reacting and you won't be fucking you know the like the biggest problem people have with tracking is they'll predict that the target's going to change direction so it'll be moving left let's say and then they'll like jitter off target they'll like move their crosser to the right assuming it's going to change directions right then and then the target keeps going left and then they're missing like all these shots when they could have just kept tracking him left and they would have like probably doubled their amount of hits. So yeah, it's super important when you're training tracking, that is the most important thing to worry about. Number 11, speaking of fundamentals, we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of flicking. Flicking, I wanna mention Bardos here. He's definitely like paved the way for flicking. For all flick shots, you wanna fast flick close to the target and then a slow micro adjustment onto the target. This is just the fastest and most efficient way of doing it. If you want more details, just go, you know, I don't know, look up the Bard Pill. He's got a great video on this, and so definitely just go check it out. See what it's all about. Fuck, this is exhausting. Number 12. Smooth aim is important. This is for, you know, many reasons, but I'm going to keep it simple. The most important reason that smooth aim is important is because it keeps your fucking screen smoother. You know, like not only... Are you keeping your crosshair on the target more often? I know I talked about this in the call main video, so I'll keep this one short too. But one thing I didn't mention is that the smoother your aim is, the easier it is gonna be to see the target's movements, how the targets are moving, how their directions are changing. And the easier it is to see that, the easier your brain can process that, and the easier it is for your whole system to process what's going on, the easier it's gonna be to adjust your crosshair and aim at the target. So smooth aim, super important, just keep that in mind. Number 13. Push yourself, guys. Come on. You got to push yourself. I, this is like a huge problem for a lot of people. People get lazy. People do all this type of shit. And if you're not pushing yourself, you're not progressing. Like maybe you have a good technique, but you're not getting the results you want. It's probably because you're not pushing yourself. Push the speed. 
just like push yourself you know what i mean it, it's hard to explain but like you need to be pushing those limits you need to see where your limits are at and then you need to push past them and become a better person like that's how progress happens progress happens outside your comfort zone you can't just be sitting still and just be doing nothing with your life you got to be pushing yourself and growing and it's the same with aim like you got to be pushing for those high scores yeah you need to work on technique keep your technique good but at the end of the day like even with perfect technique if you're not pushing for new high scores pushing to improve your aim like you're not going to improve number 14 you just want to make sure you're being deliberate with your mouse movements you know if you're flicking to the target and then adjusting onto the target you want to make sure you're deliberately like flicking close to the target and then recognizing where your crosshair is at and deliberately moving the mouse the way you think you need to move it to get it onto the target instead of just like willy-nilly flicking around flicking trying to get on the target wada wada like that's not how you do it you got to be deliberate you got to be doing it right you got to be doing it how you think you should be doing it and you need to be constantly trying to like do better like be deliberate with your practice guys come on number 15 stay focused and limit distractions if you're looking at TikTok in between every single round it's going to be distracting and you're not going to be as in the game you're not going to be as focused and winning is going to be harder there's literal studies online i don't know the specifics but i've definitely read them before correct me if i'm wrong but i've heard it takes about like 15 minutes of like uninterrupted like practice in order for you to get into like a flow state and so if you're interrupting your focus every one minute one two three minutes whatever you're actually shooting yourself in the foot because you're not going to be progressing as fast as you want to you're not going to be reaching that flow state and you're not going to be getting the benefits of that the increased learning faster learning better performance lots of crazy shit and it takes being focused and in order to get focused you need to limit your distractions it's really important guys seriously number 16 be consistent in your training this one's simple it's better to train 10 minutes per day every day than it is to train one hour once a week and this is important for a lot of reasons most of your learning happens when you're sleeping um, and then if you're getting consistent practice every day you get to practice you'll sleep you'll absorb all that knowledge you practice again you're improving every single day whereas if you train one time at the end of the week one hour yeah you improve a bit but it's inconsistent your brain isn't going to stick onto it the same level it just doesn't work the same there's studies about this as well you need to be consistent if you need to play less often in a day in order to be more consistent that's important in progress it seriously is and i just want to mention long sessions can be good too especially as you get better um, but you still need that consistency you can't trade out consistency for long sessions you can't it just doesn't work number 17 your movement might be the issue um yeah i said it it is seriously a problem for a lot of people if your peaks are bad you're going to be dying really fast um not to mention if your movement during a fight is bad you're going to be dying faster as well and the fact of the matter is when you're moving you're a harder target and the harder target you are the longer you'll survive on average and the longer you survive on average the longer you have to aim and so good movement literally just makes aim easier it makes it more efficient more effective keeps you alive longer your stats are just going to go up if you have good movement so this isn't a movement guide but just keep it in mind if you have bad movement it might be holding back your aim number 17 oh sorry <laughs> number 18 peaking technique is one of the most important elements of good aim a good peak requires you to pre-aim into the wall and then peek out with just air d this means during the peak the crosshair should land exactly where you're expecting the enemy to be without any mouse movement at all you know i had a problem where i'd kind of round the corner yeah i'd pre-aim into the wall but if i was like off the target i was like aiming for i would like adjust my crosshair as i'm peeking so that it like it kind of felt like i had good crosshair placement but the point i'm making is i was peeking the wrong angle and then I was adjusting with my mouse, with my mouse movement to like try to fix the problem. But the real problem was that I was peeking incorrectly. My pre-aim was just bad through the wall. And if you're doing this wrong, the speed of your peak is going to be negatively impacted because you're actually peeking slower on the enemy screen because you're peeking the wrong angle. So definitely keep this in mind if you're dying really fast peeking and you think you have good cross replacement, but maybe you don't. Number 19, uh, if you're struggling to hit moving targets in Valorant, it's probably not because you have bad micro corrections it's usually from bad precise tracking skills uh yeah i'm mentioning tracking again it's really important there's like two categories of tracking there's reactive tracking and there's precise tracking reactive tracking is really good in games like overwatch and apex when people are 80 spamming a lot and they move way faster in valorant people move a little bit slower but they're also usually like smaller targets and they do still move so you need good precise tracking skills 
in order to get on the head quickly on like moving targets and to stay on the head effectively. If you're like missing, like just think of it this way. If the target moves a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, and you can't effectively stay on the head when they're moving slow, you're gonna be missing bullets to the left and the right of them. And you, these are shots that you could be hitting if you had better precise tracking skills. So definitely, if you have bad precise tracking skills, definitely think about practicing them a little bit more. They help a lot with gunfight consistency. Number 20, find the one. I know it was a long video. I don't know, this is like a weird tip. I was working on it today and it actually helps me a lot. So when peeking, it's actually good to pre-aim into the wall early. The thing I wanna note is I've heard a lot of people talk about like what good crosshair placement is. People usually say like, oh, you need your crosshair outside the wall as you're coming up to the angle. And then when you get into the angle, when you get to the angle, you wanna pre-aim into the wall, then peek. The problem with this is that if there's no enemy close, you're actually losing a timing by doing this. When you pre-aim into the wall early, you can instantly go for the wide swing right away. And you'll know you have good crosshair placement because you know exactly where they are and you can get the best peek off as quickly as possible, which maximizes your chances of winning the fight. And the only risk here is if someone's holding wide, they could catch you off because you're aiming into the wall. They would catch you off not even looking at them. The caveat here is that it's good as long as you know there's no one holding you close. If you know exactly where the enemy is, why in the world would you pre-aim outside of the wall? You like know exactly where they are. So pre-aim into the wall and just peek them right away. There's no reason to clear those close angles if you know no one's there. It's just pointless. You gotta maximize your efficiency. The game is all about like the small timings, the small little windows. And in order to maximize those little windows, sometimes it's best to pre-aim into the wall early. No, it's not bad cross replacement if you're peeking faster and getting the kill earlier. Like that's actually really good. So yeah, just watch out for those close little lag alerts. Just, just watch out for those close little lurkers. Um, but if you know no one's close, like you gotta just pre-aim the wall early and just take that fight. Like it's a good fight for you as long as you're doing it properly, you know? So yeah, this is important. It actually helped me a lot recently. So I just wanted to add that in. Um, but yeah, that's about it, y'all. It was a long video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks again for watching. I love all you guys. Have a good one. Peace.